that they can. Now, when you understand that he has a gift of empowerment that God has given him, now please, don't, don't, I know we've had a long day, but I tell you, draw on his anointing. Don't just catch what he's saying, pull out, pull, pull out of his spirit like you ain't never pulled before. Say, I want it all because when I leave, I'm fully empowered, I'm fully within in authority, and I'm so honored, sir, that you would accept to be with us today and to share with us in this house one of many times that you shall come and be here again and again. There's something we say when we receive somebody that is of the prophet's status and we stretch our hands toward them. We say, blessed be the man, be the man who, comes who comes in the name, in the name of, our of our Lord. Pastor Jamal Bryan, come, come, come. Come on and give God some praise all over this house. Come on and worship the name of the Lord all over this house. Bless the name of Jesus. Would you take your neighbor by the hand, stretching out even across the aisles. Leave no person untouched. Whoever's hand you're holding, just pull on them just a little bit. Pull on them just a little bit. Because I want you to know that this afternoon you're holding on to somebody who refuses to let go. If you're, if you're ever so gently, ever lightly, just squeeze their hand. Not to squeeze it off, but just squeeze it so that they know that you're there. Because somebody on your left, somebody on your right, has no idea what a miracle feels like. They don't know what it took for you to make it here today. They don't know what it is that tried to drive you crazy. We tried to drive you back into your past. What it is the devil tried to do to give you a nervous breakdown. But you can declare after all that I've been through, I still got joy. If you'll take your neighbor's hand, all eyes are closed, all heads are bound. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I come this afternoon asking for a supernatural transfer of accounts. I pray right now, dear Lord, that you will transfer out of me into my neighbor's spirit whatever it is they don't have so God if I have a job and my neighbor is unemployed transfer it out of my body and put an opportunity into their tomorrow Lord if I've got somebody and my neighbor is lonely I pray right now dear Lord that you'll transfer out of my spirit friendship so that they'll know that they're never alone that they're never forsaken god if my neighbor's living in debt and i'm living debt free i pray right now that you will transfer accounts until it's pressed down shaken together and running over lord please forgive my neighbor who in this moment is uncomfortable because they think i have a sweaty hand let them know that's not sweat in my hand but that's an anointing that I'm pushing into their hand. I pray right now, God, that you will anoint their hands so that when they get home, they'll put their hand on the doorknob. And when they turn the doorknob, everything in their house will be turned upside down. And the blessed people of God who want a new anointing, lose those hands and thank God for yourself. Come on and bless his name even right now. Come on, you can bless his holy name. You can bless his holy name. You can magnify his holy name. Bless his, his holy name. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We count this a sacred privilege to 
be in this sacred space called sanctuary to be in God's house one more time he didn't have to let me live but he did and because of that all I can do is tell God thank you there's so many people in the hospital this afternoon so many people in jail so many people in a convalescent center who wish that they could be in church today you ought not take it lightly or take it for granted would you help me thank God that you have an opportunity to worship God on a Friday afternoon I want to take a point of personal privilege to express my utmost gratitude to the tribal chieftain of this colony of faith in the embodiment of Bishop Eddie Long. You want to, you want to, amen. In this last hour of modern day Christendom, there are so many preachers who can sing, spit, and holler, but don't have the substance of things hoped for. When you have a preacher who, in the words of the late Hosea Williams, is unbought and unbossed, not afraid of anybody or anything, and is sold out for the gospel of Jesus Christ, would you give God a hand clap of praise for him? Bless the Lord. I am eternally indebted. I don't even know uh, if he remembers back in 1993, uh, my senior year uh, at Morehouse. My parents were serving uh, as missionaries in Liberia, West Africa. And uh, Bishop Eddie Long, I was not a member of New Birth. Uh, when I was at Morehouse, God was still working on me. Uh, so I was not uh, in church as I should have been. Uh, but while my parents were abroad doing the work of the kingdom and I was lost in the abyss, uh, Bishop Long personally uh, paid for my last year in college uh, when money ran out. And I just want to thank him and appreciate him for everything that he's done. There are so many people uh, not just in this immediate ministry who the Lord has used Bishop Long to use to bless. Amen. So you ought never let anybody talk about your pastor, talk about your preacher. You ought to thank God for him. Come on, stand to your feet and give God some praise for him. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Um, I thank God for all of you, and all of you are uh, important uh, in the body of Christ. I uh, want to thank God for a remnant uh, of our members. They rode on the bus uh, for about 18 hours uh, just to come and be with their pastor on today. Uh, members of Empowerment, would you all please stand wherever you all are? Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I want. Uh, the Lord has blessed our ministry next month uh, our church will be four years old we started on Easter of 2000 with 43 members uh, and the Lord has blessed us in four years from 43 members to 6,000 members and we're just thankful to God be the glory uh, for the great things that he has done of all the things that the Lord uh, has blessed in our ministry an elementary school a family life center uh, a new state-of-the-art sanctuary the best thing uh, that the Lord has done for our ministry is he gave us a first lady and I'm thankful for her and she's here with us on today first lady Giselle won't you please stand glad to have her here in worship with us on today yeah. Uh, thank God for my adopted uh, spiritual godmother, Dr. Wanda Turner. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, I'm, I'm in uh, a precarious predicament this afternoon in dealing uh, with being single uh, in 2004 uh, in America. And I don't want us uh, to just gloss over it and not deal with it for the substance of what that represents and for what that means. Uh, about three weeks ago, Bishop Long on the cover 
uh, of the culture section of the LA Times, there were two contrasting articles. Uh, on one side of uh, the front page of the culture section of the LA Times, it was an article about sex in the city. Uh, right adjacent to that article was uh, an article about the passion of Christ. In the Sex and the City article, it was talking about how great a loss America was going to have because Sex and the City was coming to a conclusion. Uh, that uh, fashion had been greatly impacted. Uh, that sisterhood bonds were uh, greatly inspired. And they encouraged all of their readers, don't miss the last episode of Sex and the City. Uh, right next to that was an article about the film on the Passion of Christ. Uh, in that, they were talking about how the Passion of Christ was too gory, it was too violent, it was too much for anybody to bear for 40 minutes of seeing Jesus being whipped and brutalized. The interesting thing is that when you step out of that, what you'll have to recognize is that America has come to the place where they embrace sex and reject passion. Uh, when you would consider uh, that Jesus had enough passion to go through the ignominious cross of Calvary, uh, knowing in advance that I was still going to have a one night stand, but still have enough passion to have nine inch nails driven through his hands. Passion is understanding that there'll be premeditated pain. Sex is saying, I'll embrace you for the moment, but after that capsule of passion is released, please don't call me. So America doesn't have a problem with sexuality, but has a problem dealing with passion. And I'm appreciative because in this setting on a Friday afternoon, you're here in church obviously because you've got a passion for what it means to live for Jesus Christ. You ought to give yourselves a big hand for that. Uh, we, we have some ministry products uh, available immediately after the service at a table somewhere outside. Uh, please find it. It'll be a blessing to you. Uh, Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. It ought not take you that long. Amen. Genesis chapter 1. And we're going to illuminate for our understanding verse number 26. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 26. Once you found it, won't you say, I got it? If you can't find it, say, Lord, help me. Amen. Let's read together with uplifted voices. And God said, If you'll put your finger there and then jaywalk over to John chapter 3, the most popular scripture in all of the Bible. John chapter 3, verse number 16. John chapter 3, verse number 16. Amen. Surely you have it by now. All right. Let's read it together. For God so loved the world. Amen. If I can reiterate for extra emphasis, Genesis 1 and 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them minion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, 
and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. I want to preach for a little while this afternoon from the subject, the door out of boredom. The door out of boredom. Turn to the person beside you and say, I need to find that door. I need to find. Amen. At some point in your life, all of us go through a season in which we're dealing with perpetual boredom. Uh, boredom is nothing more than being wearied by the tedious irritation of the dullness of life. But you come to a place where you just feel like, what am I going to do now? Because it doesn't look like anything is going to happen next. Theologians have declared that God found himself transferring from sympathy to empathy not until Jesus shows up. But I beg to differ and I want to argue, argue scripturally uh, that unfortunately one of the issues that has not been addressed in the Bible because we've dealt with homosexuality, dealt with adultery, deal with lying, dealt with cheating, deal with jealousy, dealt with envy, but the Bible really has not dealt with boredom. Uh, but I want to posit for your consideration uh, that God was the very first one to be bored. When you look at Genesis chapter 1, we've got to consider uh, because I'm Trinitarian in doctrine, I believe uh, in all three in one, God the Father, Jesus the Son, uh, the Holy Ghost as the Spirit. That from the beginning of time in Genesis chapter 1, all three of them are working as one entity. God then has keeping him company in the cosmos, the Son in Jesus the presence of the Holy Spirit in the Holy Ghost. But in Genesis chapter one, he says, I want something else. I've got to pause here because we've got so many superficial saints who say, okay, I've got the Holy Ghost, so I don't want anything else. But God in Genesis chapter one says, I've got the Holy Ghost and Jesus, and still I desire more. So when we go through Genesis chapter 1, we declare him, hear him declaring a litany of commands of let there be. He speaks those things that are not and hence they become. He says let there be light and immediately there is light. He says, let there be water, and, and, and immediately there is water. He says, let there be land to separate the water, and immediately there is land that separates the water. He says, still this is not enough. Let there be creeping things. And so now there's creeping things. He says, let there be flying things, and now there's flying things. And finally, God says, there's still not enough. There's a lesson here because God has possessions but he realizes having possessions in and unto itself is not enough if I've got nobody to share it with so there are people who have acquired great tangible things but it doesn't mean anything if you don't have anybody in your space and in your life to share it with so God says, I've got all of these possessions. It's not enough. I'll make me a man, according to James Weldon Johnson. So he creates a man, breathes into him the breath of life, and that breath of life becomes a living being, and Adam comes into existence. Adam now exists, and he's got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, but he's still born. So God says, okay, all right, you got me, but you still want something else. So let me create you a woman. He creates Eve. So Adam and Eve have each other, and now the two of them are born. They have somebody that the Lord created flesh of their flesh, 
bone of their bone, spirit of their spirit, but still are not complete. Oh, oh, hold on, preacher, are you suggesting to me I can have somebody saved and they still don't do nothing for me? Are, are, are you saying they can go to my church but, but still don't fulfill me? Eve is bored, and I want to prove it in scripture. She's bored. She only been married to him for a week. And after being married to him for a week, she goes to the garden by herself. We got a problem here uh, because we don't know where Adam is. The problem here is because Adam believes he's got Eve on lockdown. And because he believes he's got Eve on lockdown, he's no longer spending time or giving attention. So because he has released the woman that God has sent him, she now is susceptible to snakes. Uh, we, 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 we've got to go further here uh, because I want to know why this woman of God, this virtuous woman, is talking to a snake who she can sense already is beneath her. It's not that she needs a man, it's just she's bored. So because she's bored, she starts to date down. So rather than wait for God to send somebody on her level, she starts spending time with somebody who can't even appreciate who she is. Ah, uh, okay. Now, you, you, you got to understand now uh, that there's, there's a problem, there's a problem here with Adam because he misunderstood his role and his responsibility. In Genesis chapter 1 verse number 26 it says I'm giving you uh, power over every creeping thing, every crawling thing, over every flying thing uh, because God says Adam I love you so much, watch this, I'm going to let you name the stuff you over. So God begins presenting every specimen one by one and say, Adam, I'm giving you the authority to name it. Uh, Adam, what you want to call this? I'm going to call this a hamster. What, what, what you want to call that? I want to call that a peacock. What, what do you want to call that? I want to call that a bear. What, what do you want to call that? I want to call that a mule. What, what do you want to call that? I want to call that a tiger. What, what do you want to call this? I want to call this a cockroach. God gave him authority to name everything. Listen to me. God was listening to hear if Adam would call the animal wife. Because he gives you the authority to name the stuff that's in your life. And I want you to catch this. I want you to catch this. Uh, uh, God always presents animals before he presents a mate. Uh, uh, okay, I, I think I'm missing some of you. So when your mate comes, you'll know the difference between a dog and a man. Um, because you, you, you done dealt with enough of them before that you know a player when you see one you know a liar when you see one you know a cheat when you see one no when God sends me the right one I can name it for what it is uh, uh, he, he says I give you authority that when I present it to you, you can speak what you want it to be. 
I know a lot of y'all are from the suburbs. Y'all are from uh, the suburbs, so y'all can't identify. Anybody here from the hood? Anybody? Okay, okay. Anybody here? Can I preach to y'all for a little while? I'm, I'm a ghetto preacher, so let me preach to, to my hood rats for just a minute. Look, let, let, let me tell you, when, when, when I grew up, when I grew up, watch this, when I grew up in Baltimore, I grew up in Baltimore in the hood, grew up in Baltimore in the hood. I know y'all didn't play this out in Lithonia in Decatur, uh, but listen, uh, those of y'all who know where West End is, Y'all, y'all can identify with what I'm talking about. Listen, in the hood in Baltimore, we used to sit on the front step, sit on the front step. I'm about seven, eight, nine years old. I know y'all never played this, uh, but when I was about seven, eight, nine years old, me and all my boys would sit on the front step. I'm seven, eight, nine years old. Listen, we would play this game. Y'all ain't never played it. We used to play this game called That's My Car. Uh, now, now, watch this. We didn't have no driver's license. We didn't have no insurance, but if we saw it, we said it's already mine. Okay, listen, 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 listen. It's about 1,200 of y'all. Ain't it? Well, that's too many. It's about 700 of y'all. The Lord has shown you something that you're supposed to get this year. God said, act like you already have it. That you got to speak into the atmosphere that is already mine. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, watch what happens. Watch, uh, watch what happens. Watch what. Y'all sit down. You know I'm A or me. Don't act like this. Okay. Listen. Uh, watch, watch, watch what happens. Eve. Uh, Eve is in the Garden of Eden. Eve is in the Garden of Eden. Watch this. And she's eating fruit. She's not supposed to eat. Uh, Pastor Patterson, theologically, scripturally, biblically, nowhere do we find any argument that Eve was hungry. She's eating out of boredom. A lot of the sin we participate in is not necessarily because we want it, but because we don't have anything else to do. God help me. You're at a place, you're at a place where you're doing some things where halfway through it, you're saying, I didn't need this. This was not even worth it. Is this what I was waiting for? Oh God, until where the devil comes in to mess with you is he'll give you recreational sin. He gives you sin just to occupy your time and your space. God help me. So there's some folk you'll go out with just because you don't want to be home. There's some folk who you talk to even though you don't have nothing in common with them. There's some folk who you allow in your house because you're tired of being home alone. But God said, how you alone as long as you got me? And some of y'all better get ready, get, get ready because uh, this is the season. This is the season at new birth I hope you can handle this that isolation comes before elevation that God's got to bring you to a place where you are by yourself and if you can praise him by yourself it don't matter who's around uh, oh God where uh, where's where's uh, where's Beyonce when you need her it's just me, myself, and I, yes. Uh, Because I realized from now on, I got to be my own, her best friend. It's just me, myself, and I. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but some of y'all this year learned how to shout, watch this, by yourself. You didn't have no praise partner. You didn't have no prayer partner. You learned how to praise him all by yourself. Uh, when, when Eve is in the garden, when Eve uh, is in the garden, watch this. Uh, she begins eating an apple that she really doesn't want, but she takes advantage of it because she's bored. Uh, the problem with many of the women, please don't uh, uh, be upset. If I'm not talking to you, I'm not talking to you. But uh, The problem with some of the women who are saved and in church... Uh, who have been taught that they can do exactly what God has done, uh, is that they find themselves believing uh, that from reading Genesis chapter 1, 
that with all of your anointing, you have the power to make a man out of dirt. <laughs> you can't make a man out of dirt. He won't be ready for you. Watch this. God never gave him a woman until he already had spirit in him. If a man doesn't have spirit, he's not going to be able to handle you. But if he's got the spirit of God in him, he can say, bring it on. Whatever you got, I'm not jealous. I'm not intimidated. You go, girl, with your bad self. I want to see you prosper. Uh, even, uh, even, uh, when you look at this scripturally, that God is dealt with boredom. Adam and Eve deal with boredom. Uh, but even the devil deals with boredom. In Job chapter 1, uh, God sends the devil a Motorola two way page. Where you going? The devil responds back, I'm going up and down, to and fro, looking for somebody to hook up with tonight. God says, okay, uh, why don't you hook up with Job? He's free. He said, no, I don't want you to hook me up with Job. He got too many boundaries. He got too many walls up. I don't want to date him. Uh, you know, God says, go ahead, just, just take him out once. I, I, think, I think you'll like him. <laughs> Joe, Joe uh, is a good guy. He's a good guy. And uh, the devil says, no, I don't want to mess with him because uh, he don't get down with me the right way. He don't get down. Uh, God says, okay, this is what I'll do is I'll knock his walls down uh, so you can take his stuff, watch this, but you can't take him. You got to be very careful of people who at any point in your life have touched you and now think they can be possessive of you. Uh, uh, he says then to Job, uh, take his house, take his car, take his clothes, take his children, take his money, but don't take his soul. I'm talking this afternoon to some survivors who out of a bad relationship, you lost almost everything. Uh, you lost your self-esteem, lost your sanity, lost your ability to trust, lost your ability to love, but you found out, I still got me. Now, God, this is going to be strange, and I know everybody can identify with this. Uh, but God said, in this modern day time, so many people shout under me when they find out they're getting a raise, when they find out that they're getting a promotion, when they find out they're getting a new car. Uh, they shout for all of that, but ask New Birth, ask them, because uh, this is my first time here. I don't know if you've ever done this, but ask New Birth, when was the last time you shouted for all your exes? When, when, when was the last time you praised him, watch this, for the relationships that didn't work? Uh, that, that, that you saw him, you saw him in the mall and said, Lord, thank you for getting that out of my space. I, oh, okay, okay, okay. Listen, 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 listen. They thought you weren't going to survive without them. They thought you would never find anybody else. They thought you would never rebound. But now you looking better. You driving better. You dressing better. You looking better. Your child is in private school. You better just thank God for all the relationships the Lord disconnected from you and say, Lord, thank you for getting it out of my space. The devil deals with boredom. But not only does the devil deal with boredom, but the people of God deal with boredom. 
Uh, in, the Bible, in the Old Testament, historically you'll remember uh, that the children of God first asked, Lord, send us a prophet. The Lord sent them a prophet. They said, okay, we're bored with prophets. Send us something else. Lord, send us a king. The Lord sent them kings. They became bored with kings. He said, they said to God, send us somebody else. God said, I've given you prophets. I've given you kings. I've given you liberators. I only got one thing left. Okay, John chapter 3, uh, verse number 16. How all of this was all uh, just my introduction. Uh, John chapter 3, uh, verse number 16. For God so loves the world that he gave Jesus. Uh, somebody shout Jesus. Somebody. Uh, now, now be careful. Be careful saying his name out loud like that. Be careful. Uh, because I, I don't want something to break out. Would you, would you say his name again, please? Would you? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah. Listen, listen, be careful, be careful, uh, be careful, be careful. Uh, because when you speak his name, when you speak his name, uh, God will perform open heart surgery. Uh, please, please, would somebody just speak his name and hear the. Oh God, when you speak his name, everything that wounded you in your past, everything that tried to kill you, everything that tried to drive you crazy, would you just speak his name at the name of Jesus? He, he, he said, uh, this is what I'm sending you to deal with your boredom. I, I'm sending you what you've been praying for. I'm sending you a man. God. Oh God, somebody help me. I feel like preaching now. He says, I'm sending you somebody uh, who in the first case will excite you. He'll, he'll, he'll excite you. Ain't, ain't nothing worse than being stuck with somebody who's boring. God, Y'all in the car, got nothing to talk about in the restaurant, got nothing to say in the movies, you ready to go home. Uh, God said, I'm sending you somebody that will excite you. God, help me. Uh, you ever been in a place, you ever been in a place, surely you have, when you were in love with somebody, you were in love with somebody uh, and you saw their car, you saw their car, it wasn't necessarily their car, you saw a car like their car, you, uh, you saw it in the car, was going in the opposite direction, you almost have an accident looking back, you got excited, watch this, because you saw something that reminded you of them. You didn't even have to see them, but you saw something that was connected to them. God help me. Whatever you do, whatever you do, I'm warning you, don't look at your neighbor. Whatever you do, don't look at your neighbor. Look straight ahead. Look at me. Because if you look at the person beside you, you are going to see what Jesus can do for somebody who almost had a nervous breakdown. Please don't look at them. If you look at them, you'll start shouting over your neighbor's victory. Oh God, look, uh, look, look, look at your neighbor, uh, look at your neighbor, sound man, wherever you are, give me a little bit in this monitor, look at your neighbor and say, please don't make me testify, uh, don't make me testify because if I start telling you about the stuff I've been through in my life, if I start testifying about the folk that tried to dismantle my peace, you would start shouting for me, I need some folk in here, you ain't jealous of nobody, you don't want what nobody else has but you're glad for what the Lord has done for you to just give them the glory and I need I need somebody who will excite me secondly I need somebody that will motivate me Oh God, that whenever I get to one level, they'll begin telling me there's more than that. There's more than that. There's more than that. Please don't say that, preacher. There's more than what I got in 2000. There's more than what I got in 2001. There's more than what I got in 2002. There's more than what I got in 2003. There's more than what I got in 2004. There's more than what I got last week. There's more than what I got last night shouting not for what I got but I'm shouting
waiting for what's coming. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to see. I'm going to see how much faith y'all really got down in Atlanta. Because some folk can only shout for what they have. But the folk who are connected to destiny, who are connected to purpose, who are connected to a promise, I'm not shouting for what I got now. I'm shouting for what's coming. Oh, I need somebody who can praise him for the stuff. Oh, God. Hey, it's coming. It's coming. Touch your neighbor. Tell him it's coming. It's, I don't know what it is, but it's coming. It's, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Everything you've been praying for. Everything you've been fasting for. Everything you've been shouting for. You said, I want to send you somebody not only that will excite you, not only that will motivate you, watch this. I'm gonna send you somebody who can deliver you. No longer can I afford to have people in my space who don't add to my destiny. If you're not taking me somewhere, I can walk all by myself. Oh God, if you mad every time I get a promotion, every time I get a raise, you do not belong in my circle. But when God gets ready to bless me, I'm looking for some folk who ain't gonna be intimidated, you ain't gonna be jealous, but you gonna be able to praise the Lord that this is my season, this is my year, this is my I'm ready to go. Come on, Amos. Oh, thank you. My time is up. But I got to go. Listen what David says. David says, oh, oh God, can, can y'all just preach with me for a little while? Look at your neighbor and say, oh, uh, y'all too stuck up. Find somebody to preach with and say, oh, oh. Uh, that's the wrong neighbor. Say, oh, uh, magnify the Lord with me. In other words, can I have this dance? Will you shout with me? Will you praise with me? Will you glory with me? If two or three are gathered together in my name, I need some praises who will shout that this is, it is my year. Take your neighbor by the hand, I gotta go. Take your neighbor by the hand. My prayer is that this year, the Lord won't bless you with stuff that's boring, but he'll bless you with stuff that as soon as you see it, you'll start shouting about it. This is what I found out. The Lord will bless you quicker. Watch me. The Lord will bless you quicker when you learn how to shout for somebody else. It, it, let's get ready to get rough in here. Look at your neighbor and say the shout I'm about to give is not for me. But the shout I'm about to give is because I want to see you in your blessed place. I want to see you press down, shake them again. Yeah!
the person you sitting beside, they don't know you that well. They don't know the nights you cried. They don't know the psychos you had to deal with. They don't know the stalkers that used to be outside your house. So this next praise, I'm giving you divine permission to be selfish. This ain't got nothing to do with my neighbor, but I need something from God that's just for me. I've been faithful over a few things. Now I need to be ruler. Uh-oh, listen, listen, hold on, listen. Hold on, Amos, put your foot on the brake. The real praisers learned how to shout when you weren't at church. You learned how to praise him driving in your car, in the shower, in the living room for 60 seconds. I need a shout with no music when you just praise him like you all by yourself. But you got God. Come on and praise. Like you're in it by yourself. This praise is for me. This shout is for me. This breakthrough is for me. You got 30 seconds left. You got 30 seconds to tell the devil where to go. You got 30 seconds to put the enemy under your feet. You got 30 seconds to get your peace back, to get your mind back. Tim. Take one person by both hands. Take one person by both hands. Take one person by both hands. Look that person in the face. Look that person in the eye. And simply say, I agree. I Oh no, they don't believe it. Look them in the face and say, I agree. Something dangerous is about to happen. Look them in the eye, say, I agree. Listen, your neighbor has no idea what they just agreed to. But the Bible says if two or three are gathered in my name, touching and agreeing. God said, whatever you shouted about, it's already done. Loose those hands and give them thanks that it's already done. 